Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on BC110 on identity. Um, so I hope week after week we are studying on this identity. We are getting uh, ourselves more clear on who we are in Christ. Is it helpful? Students in the class, is it helpful? Are we getting clarity on our identity in Christ? You all can post on chat. So what we can do today is we're going to move on to on the continuously on the crucifixion with Christ. We are buried with Christ. We are resurrected with Christ. And we have been seated at the right hand of God. So how are we, how are we um, you know, uh, we are going to study in detail on this. So as we progress, we would request each of us to take few scriptures and read. So I request everyone to keep your Bibles open. And the students from the online also can keep your Bibles open. I would request one of you all from the online um, to open up the scriptures and read through. So what happens is when we read the scripture, the word has power. The word has power to change our mind to renew our mind to bring the truth into us so that we realize and we will accept this truth okay so we're going to uh, read a lot of scriptures today and study on that so i would request students on campus and online to keep the bible handy and you know read through the scriptures as we uh, progress to study on the steps how we've been identified in christ Okay, so we are on we are on page sixty one on our notes. Okay, so let's turn to Romans chapter six, verse six to seven. Romans chapter six, verse six to seven. Can I request somebody from online to turn and you can unmute my and from the on camp is also in the same time. So who's reading online? Can you all please raise your hand? Can I ask Krisha if you're ready? Okay, Karen is ready. Good. Okay, Karen, you can unmute your mic and open chapter six. Uh, and on campus, who's ready to read? Okay, Anand, you can read. Yeah, please go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Okay. Okay, so what we saw here, knowing this, that our old man was crucified. When we say the old man, our old nature, the natural man was crucified in Christ. The old person or the sinful person has been crucified with Christ on the cross. So can we turn to Ephesians chapter 4? Verse 22 to 24. Krishna, if you're ready, you can read. Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, so uh, you're. Yeah, your hearts and your minds must be made completely right. new. Yeah, okay. okay, sorry, it's from 20, 22. From 22, right, ma'am? Yes. Okay, so get rid of your old truth. That is, uh, uh, sorry, so get rid of your old self, which made you life as you used to. Uh, 
the old self that was being destroyed by its disease was 22 to 24 yes ma'am but my version is different yes ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 to 24 i'm reading is Krishna yeah. audible to Am I audible to everyone? No. Okay. So I'm going to repeat then. Uh, so get rid of your old self, which made you live as you used to. The old self that was being destroyed by its deceitful desires. Your hearts and your minds must be made completely new and you must put on the new self which is created in God's likeness and reveals itself in the true life that is upright and holy. Okay, thanks, Krisha. Thanks, Rin. So what happened in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24, we see a contrast between the old man and the new man. So what is that? The old man had to do with the life before becoming a new creation. So this old man was corrupt, was sinful. He was deceitful. He had he carried this deceitful lust in him. But on the other hand, when he received Jesus as the Lord and Savior, now he has become a new creation. He's become a new man. So when he became a new man, what is in him? There's life. There's God's nature put in him. Now what he has, there's no more. There is no, there is, uh, the sin has no power over him. The sin nature that was in this natural man has been crucified on the cross. Now, what is the truth that we need to understand? We need to understand that the sin nature, the corruptible nature, the things that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ha had a grip over our life. Maybe it can be different addictions that we were in. Now, those nature has no power over us. Why? Because now we have been crucified with Christ. Now, this nature has no power over us. What we need to understand, the body of sin, the, na the old nature of man has no power over us because he's been dead. So let me put it this way. Let's give an illustration. In natural, if a man dies, and this man had a lot of debts, a lot of debts, whatever the deeds he did, good, bad, everything. Now, will those debts have power over him? No. So nothing in the natural realm would have any power over him. Nothing in the natural realm has any power over him. Why? Because he's been dead. The same way, same way, the natural, the sin nature that was in man has no power the minute He's been crucified in Christ. We are saying, Lord, I'm crucifying myself, the old man, the old nature, the sinful nature, the deceitful nature, which is in me, with which I was been birthed, has been crucified on Christ, in Christ. So what happens when we are crucified in Christ? The old nature dies with Christ. This is what in the last class we studied about the divine exchange. We need to understand that we have been crucified with Christ. Now, how do we have this understanding? 
we need to tell ourselves again and again. That's what Romans says, right? I mean, Paul says in the, uh, uh, Paul says it in the book of Romans. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So why has this word been repeated twice? Anyone in the class, why is this word been repeated two times? I'm sure you all would be studying this in the faith class. Faith comes by hearing the hearing and hearing the word of God. Why do you think this word has been repeated in the scripture? Sean? Sorry? Okay, the Romans where uh, I think it's 10, 17. Romans, can you all turn to Romans chapter 10? Sean, can you read it? Romans chapter 10, verse 18. Okay, NKJV version, anyone has uh, NKJV? Okay, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the way, word of God. So that means that you need to keep hearing, you keep repeat the truth again and again till we get the understanding till our heart receives the understanding, till we start believing in this truth, and this truth will set us free. That's what the scripture says. When you know the truth, the truth will set us free. So we need to get this understanding. We need to get this knowing within us that we have been crucified in Christ. Our old nature has been crucified in Christ, and this nature has no power over us. So we need to understand this. We need to get this. This nature has no power. We are dead to sin. We need to believe that we are dead to sin. So that we have been made alive in the nature of God. So that the righteousness of God, the holiness of God can become alive and active in us. So that we can work towards the nature of God. This new nature of God. The fruit of the Spirit, you know, can be developed within us. So we need to understand the truth. How? By renewing the mind. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So how do we renew our mind? By reading the Word of God, by pondering on the word of God. The more and more we meditate on the word of God, we see our mind been renewed. The word of God has the power to change us inside out. Only the word of God. The word has power to change us inside out to bring life into every dead area in our life to bring give us the understanding to our mind it's a gift of the spirit understanding is the gift of the spirit that which the natural man did not understand before now through the spirit of the lord is able to understand what he was unable to understand before how the Spirit of the Lord enables his mind, gives him the understanding. We see the wisdom of God been activated in us. And that's when we experience the new revelation of Christ in us when we read through the scripture. Every time we read the scripture, it is not the same revelation that we get. It's not the same understanding we get. Every time there's something new, God keeps renewing our mind, our understanding, and he reveals to us, he speaks to us. The spiritual truth has been revealed to each of us when we read the word of God. So this old man has no power over us. Why? Because he's been crucified with Christ on the cross. 
and he has no power over us. This old nature, it can be anything, it can be as bad as it can be. But this old nature is crucified, has been nailed on the cross. And you need to believe it and you need to claim it. The minute you believe and claim, you see that which was holding a grip over you as no power over you. You have the freedom. You have the freedom to rebuke it. You have the freedom to be away from it. You have been set apart. You have been set apart from the whole nature. In the previous class, we studied on sanctification. We have been purified by Christ. How? When we are crucified in Him. This old nature has no power. It can be any area that we are struggling in. Any area that is not, any nature that is not of God that we may be struggling in with an old man. But you need to believe you are not that old man, but you are a new man in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ. You have the Spirit of God who is indwelling in us. How do you know the Spirit of the Lord is indwelling in us? Can we turn to John chapter 14? Vimal, can I get your Bible, please? John 14. Gospel of John chapter 14. Verse 16. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nikhil. Anyone from online would like to read the scripture from NKJV version? Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. John 14, verses 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jarchin. Okay. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. So what does the scripture talk about? talks about that the God, Jesus is sending, God is sending an helper. Who is the helper here? Holy Spirit. And what does it say? It says, He will abide with you forever. The Spirit of the Lord, who is sent by God Himself, will abide with us forever. This is the promise that God gave us, right? That I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we have the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who is abiding with us forever. So He helps us overcome every sinful nature that is in us or that was in us. So now when we become a new creation, when we accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior, the Holy we receive, when we receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us in the right way, in the right direction when we seek Him. So Paul also reaffirms this truth in the book of Colossians or in the letter to Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. Can I request or return to Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13? <clears throat> Yes, 
So here we see Paul draws a comparison with, with regard to circumcision. He says that in Christ we were circumcised. That is, something was taken out from the body of sinful nature or the body of flesh. And here, so through that, the power of the dominion of sin over us has been cut out and put away. So he's talking about the circumcision. He's not talking about, uh, he's not talking about the <clears throat> the actual one, but he's telling what happens when we are in Christ. So we have been circumcised in Christ. He says that not made without hands, but putting off the body of sin of the flesh. Every flesh desire has been put off from us and we have been circumcised in Christ. That means we have been purified. The old nature has been cut off from us and thrown away. And that part of it has no power over us. And we also see now we have been identified in Christ. How? Through his crucifixion. Why? Uh, we have been crucified. When we are crucified, the old nature, the sinful nature has been dead and that has no power over us. We have been made free through Christ Jesus. So we need to believe this. So with that, we will move on to verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. Can I request someone from the someone from online to take up the scripture? Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 5, and read it out. Sure, Karen, please go ahead. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Je Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him to baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Vimal. Reading. So what happened here? So in Christ, we have been baptized. We have been baptized into Christ and we are baptized into his death. Now, after crucifixion, what happened? Jesus died on the cross. So we have been taking part into his death. So we were buried with him through the baptism into the death. We have been submerged. We have been immersed in the water, right? We have been taking part into his death, burial in, in Christ. So just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in that newness of life by knowing, by acknowledging. So yes, we had this in nature in us, but now I'm a new creation. My nature, my old nature, the old man has been crucified and cross, is dead, buried, and he has no power over me. Now I'm a new man, new creation. The old nature has no power. It has lost its grip over me. We need to renew our mind. We need to believe in the truth that the word of God says, that you are the new creation. You have the newness of life in you. Why? For we are united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So when you believe that you have been crucified in Christ, you have died in Christ, you need to believe that the old nature has also been crucified, died and buried. And that nature has no power. Now we are resurrected in Christ. We are the new creation. 
and the spirit of the lord is living inside us and he will help us to walk in this newness of life the old nature has no power it has no grip over us now how do we know that we need to believe it mark 923 anything nothing is impossible to the one who believes the scripture also says the truth sets you free so we need to understand this truth we need to know this truth so that when we know the truth when the temptation knocks at your mind you know that you need to speak the scripture to overcome the situation and you need to know that that temptation has no power over you that you are strong enough to overcome that that temptation because now you are in christ because you are in christ you are more than an overcomer you need to believe that you need to believe that you can overcome everything every situation every temptation every wiles of the enemy you can overcome nothing has power over you because the christ is a new and you are a new creation chapter 3 verse 6 says for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God what happened when you died when you die that is when we receive Jesus as a lord and savior we immerse ourselves like how we immerse ourselves in water in the same manner we immerse ourselves in Christ okay so christ is around you and you have been immersed in christ just imagine if you are wearing a blazer how do you wear a blazer you just put your hand inside a blazer right and you have been immersed you have been covered with that blazer isn't it are you getting you have been covered in that blazer same way you have been immersed in christ so when god looks at you god does not look at you as a individual but you know when god looks at you he sees jesus through you because we are been immersed for example if you are immersed in the colors like if you are immersed in red color how would we be completely red that's how that's how you will be when you are immersed in christ you will be full of christ that's how you see the nature is been transformed you don't carry that old nature in you in your new life the old nature has no power and it starts reflecting in you you don't have to tell everyone that you are in christ you are a believer you are a follower or you are no more like before no people notice that in you automatically there will be a difference in the way uh you lead your life the way you talk in the action the way you conduct yourself there is a change in your nature change in your behavior change in the way you uh, you lead your life there is a new character been developed in you that is the christ likeness because you have this new mind in you and this new mind which paul is talking about in romans 12 he says this new nature the new mind desires to lead a life that is pleasing to god it desires why because you are living a life in christ so you want to reflect the nature of god in you and that's why there's a desire within you that you desire to lead a life pleasing to god you avoid getting angry you avoid speaking lies you avoid being a false witness you avoid doing the things that you were indulged in doing before you avoid thinking a uh, uh, negative things or doing anything negative but here you're you're doing the things that are pleasing god the new nature of god the love of god the fruit of the spirit has been activated within you you see that nature 
more in you, growing more in you. So every time you do something good that pleases God, the nature of God in you, you see this kind of peace, this kind of joy, the kind of happiness that comes within you. And at the same time, when you do the deeds that are not very pleasant and that is not of the nature of God, you see yourself grieving within you. You see yourself con being convicted within yourself, hey, you did something not right that is against the nature of God. And now, to correct that, you take a step of going and correcting yourself. It may also be to ask somebody an apology, or do things rightly, give, give away the things that was uh, taken from the person unrightfully. So there is a change in our nature, in our thoughts. Why? Because we have been crucified and we have been buried to the old nature of man. And we are hidden in Christ so we can lead a life unto righteousness and holiness of God. The next is being resurrected with Christ. Can I request someone to read Romans 6 verse 4? Five and eight. Uh, anyone on online also can start reading. You can unmute your mic and start reading. Romans 6, verse 4, 5, and 8. Therefore, my brethren, are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear? OK. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Great verse. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Gina. Okay. So what we saw in the scripture, that we were buried in Christ through the baptism into death, just like how Christ was raised from death by the glory of the Father, even so should we walk in the newness of life. And we also see in verse 5, for we have been united together in the likeness of his death. and certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection now if we die with christ we believe that we also live with him and in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 sorry ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 we read can we all turn to ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 5 I'll read it for all of us. And you he made alive, you were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, 
even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. So what did we understand from the scripture? Anyone? What did we understand? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, from online, can you share? Is he church? Can you hear? We were once living in sin, but now we are made right, right with God through Christ Jesus. We also see that we are changed. What we were dead in trespasses and sins, walked God to the world in Christ. So we have been made. Thank you, reader. Thank you, Krishna. So, what we understand from the scripture is that when we were crucified, when we were buried, we are led to this sin. The old nature has been dead, and that nature has lost its grip us. That nature has no power over us. So, as we believe that the old nature has no power, we need to also believe. The new, the new creation that we have been resurrected with Christ. We need to believe this truth. The way we believe that okay, we have been crucified and we died in Christ, we need to now believe that we have been resurrected in Christ and been made alive in Him in this new life. We are the new creation in Christ. We have access to the new life like how we believe the old nature has no power the old nature has lost the grip over us now we need to believe in the new creation in this newness of life this life is eternal the zoe life of god is eternal for us we need to believe that this new life, which is eternal, we have the fullness of life in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture says. We are made new. We are the new creation. And we have this freedom. We have this liberation to lead a life in Christ. By believing, the old nature has no power. And now the, the newness of life, the life in Christ, yeah, God expresses, he gives us a new grace. That is a new character. There's a new virtue put into us. That is the truth, which can lead a life in truth, to lead a life that is pure, to lead a life that is holy, because these are the nature of God. The God who dwells in us, the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, will lead us in the nature of God. The grace of God that God has put in us will lead us in the nature of God. That is 
pleasing to God. And this nature has the power of God. This nature has the power of God. And only with this nature, only with the power of God, we can set ourselves aside from the old nature. We can tell the old nature that you have no power, no claim over me because I am a new creation. I have the Holy Spirit, the Christ who dwells in me. As in John 15 says, as you abide in me, I abide in you. We are together. We also read in Colossians that we have been hidden in Christ. Christ is in us. As we believe that, let's also believe in the next verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. It says, We have been raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. So we are just not crucified, died, and buried. But now we have been raised in Christ and we have been seated at the right hand of the Father. We have been seated at the right hand of the Father. And we should understand one thing. S sitting at the right hand of God is the highest place. Sitting at the right hand of God is the highest position that has been given to Jesus. John 3.16, what does it say? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Only begotten son. And where is this son being seated right now? at the right hand of God the Father. Now this place, this position that has been given to His only begotten Son has been made available to you and me when we are in Christ Jesus. You got this truth? You got this understanding? So when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it is just not the freedom from the sin, it's just not the freedom from our old nature. It's not just that we have got a new identity, but we have also got this new position. We have the authority. This position carries certain authority and dominion. Because the scripture says everything on earth, under the earth and in heaven is subjected to Christ Jesus. So now you and I are seated with Jesus on the right hand of God. So you and I have the authority and dominion over certain things here that we can exercise. So God has given us the authority. So we can handle ourselves with that. We need to carry that power and tell the enemy, you have no power over me. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I have a new identity. I have this new authority. I have a dominion. And you have no power over me. We need to get this understanding in us that we are in Christ. We have been crucified, dead, buried, resurrected. And now we have been seated at the right hand of God. And one thing we need to understand, that you are not alone clearly understand. There is no way for us to feel lonely, to be depressed, to have any kind of anxiety. Nothing has power over us when we are in Christ. When we are in Christ, He is with us. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. He is within us. He is much closer than the breath that we breathe. And there's a promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We just read in John chapter 14, 16, that he abides with us forever. 
So this is something that we need to believe and understand that knowing that we have been seated with Christ, in the right hand of the Father, as stated in Ephesians 2, 6, that we are raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there is a position to rule and reign that God has given to each of us. It is a better and a higher position in the spiritual realm. And with that understanding, you can lead your life with authority on this earth, on this natural realm, knowing that God is with you. Nothing can come against you. So what are the three things that we need to know? The three key words used in Romans chapter 6, instructing us what to do with this truth of identification with Christ is three things. What are those three? Knowing, reckon, know, reckon, and healed. Know, reckon, and healed. What is knowing? Romans 6.6. 6. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, verse 6. By we knowing the truth, by we knowing the truth. Now, what is the truth? That we are, the old nature of us has been crucified, died, buried. We need to know that clearly. And that nature is no power. That nature has no power over us. Okay. And the third point, what is that? Reckon or consider Romans 6, chapter 11 to 12. Romans 6, chapter 11 to 12. It says, accept the truth. Accept it as a fact. So we need to consider to be true thing and act aligned to this truth. So when we, when we act or accept this truth, when we consider this truth, when we reckon to this truth, that means what? We are believing. And when we believe, it becomes true in our life. When we believe, we start exercising. We start walking in the authority and dominion that is given to us from the spiritual realm. We start exercising the authority and dominion, what we receive from God on this natural realm. Because we believe. And because we believe, it becomes, you know, it manifests in the right way to us. So we need to believe, we need to know, and we need to reckon, that is, believe or consider the truth, accept the truth. And then the last point is healed. Embrace to it. Romans 6, verse 13. Verse 16 and verse 19. It says, Healed yourself to the Lord. That means, give yourself to the Lord. Embrace yourself to the Lord. Surrender yourself completely without holding anything back. Complete surrender. Or Make yourself available to God so that He can use you as His instrument of righteousness. And this will eventually result as being a vessel of honor unto God. It will lead us to lead a life that is pleasing to God, holy and righteous, that has been accepted in Christ Jesus. So finally, we have covered on these three points, that is knowing, reckon, and heal it. When we know, we put things into action, we consider. And then we are healed, it. we are enduring it. We are applying it in our life and we are leading a life that is pleasing to God. So we need to believe that. We are, been we, are, we are crucified in Christ, we are died in Christ, we are buried in Christ, and we have been resurrected in Christ, and we have been positioned to be seated with Christ at the right hand of God.
And this is the highest position that God has given to his son Jesus, which has been made available for you and me through Christ Jesus. And now we need to lead our life with this authority, with this knowledge, with this knowing that we are in Christ. And I carry this new identity that the old nature has no power, but this new nature which is in me has eternal power. It is the Zoe life of God which will lead me more to be more like Him. And the power of God has been activated in me that I can overcome the old nature of God. So there's nothing that you and I could give up on ourselves, but then we can hold on to this truth and lead a life that is pleasing to God. Okay? Done? Because the scripture says, my burdens are, uh, my yoke is not heavy. Right? It is not heavy. Because he is with us and he is leading us. The scripture says, I hold your right hand and I will lead you. I will walk with you. So we need to believe on this truth. We need to accept this truth. We need to understand. We need to renew our mind with this new identity, new life that we have. The Zoe life of God is active in us. Class, you all got it? Okay. So with this understanding, we'll end this session. And in the next class, we will study on Romans chapter 8, where Paul, uh, chapter 8, where Paul teaches us about the spirit of life who empowers us to live in this truth of identification. Okay. So with that, we will end the session with a word of prayer. Can I ask somebody from the online? Uh, Surya, can you lead us in prayer? And one person from the on campus, Nina, you will lead us in prayer. Thank you. Surya, you can unmute, or anyone from the online can unmute and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. I hope it was a blessing to each one where we can renew our mind and identify ourselves in Christ. With that, we will see you all next class. I mean, next class next week. Thank you. God bless. Have a nice weekend.